we're just going to do a basic men's haircut. It's going to be a, a taper fade haircut from a number one clipper. Um, these are the tools I'm going to be using. Just a pair of shears. These are called thinning shears. They have little teeth and then a sharp side. So they just cut a little bit of the hair at a time, kind of like thin it out. They are really good for blending. I comb the number one clipper attachment. Here's my clippers. And then these are just some T-edge trimmers. These are really good for around the ear and um, the back of the neck. You need a squirt bottle and a cape. If you don't have a cape, you can use a garbage bag and just pop a hole in the top or wrap it around. But it's a good thing to buy if you're going to be doing your kids and husband's haircuts for a while. All right, so what we do is we always start with the perimeter. So grab your T-edgers and your comb. And I like to start at the back here. And you're just going to try to make a, a straight line. And you always start where the hair, you don't want to cut into the perimeter ever. So where the lowest part of the hair, or the highest part of the hair comes up on the hairline, you don't want to go higher on the line than that. Otherwise, you're going to have... I mean, it's just going to keep getting higher and higher. So I usually start pretty low down here. And I just try to make a straight line. And always stand in front of where you're working. If you try to reach around and you're not standing in front of it, it's going to go crooked. So you need to walk around the person you're doing. It helps if you have a swivel chair, but just make sure you're moving if you don't have one. Okay, look down. And then I go down here and I usually just clean up any stray neck hairs. Okay, that's going to get cleaned up a little bit more later. Go to the side. Same thing, you don't want to cut into the actual hairline. So you're going to comb it over and see where it starts to get thin. If you're not sure, keep it away from it a little bit. Now around the ears, you're just going to go... Now if you have someone that has a lot of hair that's grown out, you can actually start with the attachment and just to get... So you can see a little bit better. So, um... I'm going to open my clipper up because he wants it a little bit longer. This um, this would be closed. That'd be shorter. This would be a little bit longer. So the number one attachment with it open all the way. And what you do is you just do upward motions like this, kind of curving up. And that will help you to taper it. If you just go straight up like this and all the way to the top, if you followed the curve of the head, you'd end up with not enough hair hair to blend in. So we're just gonna try to keep it right where the head rolls. So just flipping it up. You kinda have to flick your wrist up a little bit. And don't worry if you have a heavy line right here, because we're gonna work on that with the thinning shears and with the scissors later. So you just kinda make sure you Get nice and tight underneath the ear right there. See, that kind of helps it to where you can see your perimeter a little bit better. If you are having a hard time not cutting into the hair, this is probably a good first step with this haircut, actually. So, same thing in the back, but you're going to bring it up to here with the roll of the head. Right as it starts to come forward, like if you put a flat board against the head, as soon as that board disconnects, like where it doesn't touch anymore, that's where you're going to try to keep from going over. So we just, at that point, you just kind of flip it up like that. It takes some practice. Don't give up.
Okay, so now you have, I'm going to take this a little bit higher, still a little bit too low. There we go. Sometimes you need to just change directions a little bit to get all the little hairs. Okay, so now we have this pretty thick line that starts right here, goes all the way around. So what you're gonna do now, actually ignore that part. What you're gonna do now is finish the, do the edging. So you go in and just do a straight line wherever they want their, wherever they want their um, side burn to be, you can ask them. And then you go around the ear. Making sure you're not going into the haircut. Try to make sure you do the same spot for the sideburns. If, like I like to match it up with the part of their ear, but even then you need to look at them from the front and make sure they're even. Okay, now I usually pull this part of the hair forward with a comb and just, just to taper it in towards the face a little bit. And on both sides. All right, now we're ready to get this part wet. When you're cutting with scissors, you're gonna want the hair wet. If you're cutting with clippers, you're gonna want it dry. Just spray the top part of the hair. And comb it. Get it just not drip all over in their face. Okay, so now we're going to take care of this, this heavy line first. We're going to go, I usually start at the right side, as close to the face as you can get, and I comb the hair forward, and then I pull it back into my fingers. And then you're going to have a guide down here. See the shortest piece right there? That's where you're going to cut from, and you're going to cut straight up with the roll of the head and don't cut any of this yet you don't want to cut past your second knuckle otherwise you're going to be cutting your fingers and your hands so try to just keep it within this working area right here so you go ahead and cut that pull it back a little bit and you just do that all the way around So you should be able to see a little bit of that guide right at the bottom of your fingers. And that's where you're trying to match to. Make sure you're moving around the head and standing right in front of where you're working. So now I usually go back the other way and just try to comb the hair back this way just to make sure that I got any little spare pieces that are still hanging on there. Okay, so if you see really close right here, there still is a heavy spot. So what I do is I take my comb 
and I pull it straight up and I just use my scissors to blend it in just a little bit more. You have to be careful not to cut too far in. If this makes you uncomfortable, these thinning shears work too and these are a lot more forgiving. If you're not a professional hairstylist and you're just trying to do your son's and your husband's hair, you need to get a pair of these <laughs> just to make sure because if you cut into the haircut, it's not going to be a definite line. It would leave more of a soft thing. This will save your life at first when you're first learning. Your husband won't be scared to go to work the next day if you have a pair of these, hopefully. Okay, so I'm going to do these because I'm not scared of them, but maybe practice on your kids. <laughs> okay. Just anywhere you see a little bit of heaviness still right where it connects from the clipper spot to where you did with your fingers. Just take the thinning shears or the, the scissors. Just blend it up. I'm just going to do a thinning shears in a few spots to show you how they kind of work. You just blend it right in. Don't think that these are going to make you look bald because they only cut just a few strands of hair and unless you're putting it right against the scalp, it's not, those short hairs will just like, they'll still be there. It's not going to make you look bald. You do have to be use them like don't go crazy on them but be kind of careful but just don't don't think you're going to make your husband look bald by using them because they're thin shears they're okay so now with the front you're going to go ahead and do a mohawk down the middle decide how long you want it this is going to give us our guide all the way down the middle so right in the middle of the hair comb both sides this way then this way Pull it straight up. I'm going to go just a little bit longer than finger length. I'm going to go down to the scalp and then pull up just a little bit. And then that's my guide. So I'm going to try to match that all the way back down this mohawk. Trying to cut only in the first two knuckles. I'm going to move your head down. down. Sorry, camera guy. <laughs> okay. And then the back right here, you should match this back section with the top. So just cut off any little pieces there. Okay, so now we have the short middle part and these two long sides right here. We need to take one side at a time and even it out. So we're gonna take this front part. You see how we have short, long, short? You're just going to cut off the middle. If you have to comb it up a few times, just to make sure you got all the pieces, do it. And then move, just move back a little bit. So we were just blending in these two sections on this side.
Okay, so now you're gonna go to the other side. Same thing. So um, if you notice what I'm doing with my comb, I'm combing up the hair and then I'm sticking it right here on my thumb to hold it there while I cut. So you comb, stick it in your thumb. And that just saves a lot of time. You don't need to keep putting your comb down onto the countertop. It takes a little bit of practice, but you'll get it. I don't even have to think about it anymore. It just happens. Okay, now on this side of the head, since I'm right-handed, I usually go over here and face the person and do one more section like this, just to get the round of the head. See how there's still the guides? That part gets missed when I'm over there. So I like to stand in front of my work to finish this little corner. Okay, now there's a little thing you can do to cross check to make sure you don't have any. So we've been cutting this way if you pull the hair up like this, you're able to see if you have any like big weighty long pieces sticking out. Sometimes every once in a while you'll get just like that, like a peak where you didn't realize you kind of missed with your fingers because your fingers are round, you're missing little sections. So this is called cross checking. You can just do this all over the top of the head just to make sure you didn't miss anything. Do it over here to make sure. If it's a little wavy like that, I mean, you can leave that if it, if you're gonna do spiky. But if you want it to be really smooth, you're gonna wanna try to cross check as much as you can. Um, you can still do it spiky without that, but. Okay, if you have um, someone that has really, really thick hair and you want it to be easier to spike, you can go through the top right now with these thinning shears and just kind of chop through the top. I'm not gonna do that to him. He has good hair, but it's not super, super thick and unmanageable, so we're just gonna leave it. Um, now you're ready to either shampoo them, if you have a shampoo in the bowl, but if not, you just let them go take a shower, and when they come back, you just stick some gel in, and they're done. So that's about it.